Hi everybody, I'm Dr. Catlin Tucker and I've had some really wonderful feedback and questions about using the station rotation model in math. So we've already talked about how we can use that teacher-led station for direct differentiated instruction and modeling sessions to better present information in a way that our learners are hopefully going to be able to take it in and then apply it. What I want to talk about in this video is the idea of getting away from stacks of worksheets and starting to think about how we might anchor offline stations in a math journal. So often teachers will have students working on problem sets on a sheet of paper. They collect them at the end of a session, a practice session, or at the end of a station, right? They might have students put it in a basket or turn it in somewhere to the teacher, hopefully, although we know lots of students struggle with that workflow. So instead of collecting these stacks of paper every time students move through an offline station, when I work with teachers, we talk about the benefit of a math journal. And that means we're not collecting student work every single day, which can actually help us in terms of our workload and not feeling like we're drowning under the student's kind of paper trail. So in the math journal, we can have students do all kinds of things, which can also create some variety for them at that offline station. So if they are working through some problem sets, maybe we ask them to select a handful of problems, maybe three out of a problem set, and annotate them in their journal. How did you solve this problem? What steps did you move through and why? Can you surface and articulate your mathematical thinking in writing next to this problem? We can also have them do error analysis. So we can provide problems that have been worked out that have errors, or we can give students an answer key, ask them to check their own work, identify problems that they missed, and then engage in error analysis. Why did this happen? Did they miss a step? Did they transpose some numbers? Like what happened that caused the error? And how can they avoid making that same mistake again in the future? Reflective prompts about what are you learning about your strengths, your limitations, your areas of need as a math student from this activity, from this sequence of lessons? So getting them really stopping to engage in that reflective practice, even reflecting on how is what you're learning in this class, how is this particular concept or mathematical process connected to something you might encounter in your life outside of school, right? Helping them to start making those real world connections. Um, and so what I have is I've written an entire blog about the benefits of a math journal, right? What we know is that writing to learn is a really powerful vehicle that we want in all classrooms and math is no different, but often it's like, where does that fit in a math classroom? And I think that pairing a math journal with that offline station and allowing students to engage in a variety of different tasks that do ask them to write their thoughts down, even though it's informal, it's not like specific to any writing style, it really does help them to kind of flush out their thinking and hopefully better understand these concepts and processes. So in the blog I just wrote, I have a math journal user guide. It is written for students. And so you can make a copy of it, you can edit it for your student audience, but it has different activities like these that students can choose from, or you can specifically assign Assign them if you don't want them to choose for a particular day. It has a middle section where there are directions and examples, and then there's a third column that has sentence starters to help them articulate their mathematical reading or their mathematical reasoning and articulate their thinking in writing about math concepts and processes. So that is just an idea to kind of get control over our crazy paper trail as teachers and not feeling like we're constantly collecting multiple stacks of paper. But it's also a great way to get students documenting their own learning, really reflecting on that learning in a single place where we can vi we can revisit it, right? We can take a look at their math journals um, periodically, but it's not every single day we're picking up paper, we're grading it for accuracy, we're giving it back. Instead, let's engage the student in some self-assessment, some critical thinking, some reflective practices.